I want to share some of the best news that we've had since this pandemic began. The University of Illinois has just today received emergency use authorization from the F Food and Drug Administration to run their saliva-based COVID-19 test at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign lab. This news puts the University of Illinois and the entire state of Illinois on the cutting edge testing, you know, of testing innovation as a uh, national player. And let me just say to President Colleen, the state of Illinois looks forward to your being, uh, to being your uh, biggest customer. Um, these uh, are really tremendous developments. Uh, there are milestones yet to achieve, uh, such as even more monitoring of test sensitivity, and then the need to scale up to meet demand. But Illinois' saliva test is less expensive, faster, and requires significantly less raw materials than traditional testing. Even among the very few saliva tests available globally, it's one of the least expensive and potentially most effective now on the market. If ongoing research continues to yield positive results, this has potentially game-changing implications for our statewide testing complex as well as for testing on a national level. Particularly for our high-risk communities and settings, this type of scalable product would allow us to mass deploy testing and better track and contain the spread of COVID-19. We're already working to deploy this to more public universities across the state over the next weeks and months and exploring rolling this out to do testing potentially for K-12 schools and even more testing at our long-term care facilities as well. The potential here is enormous. I'm so proud, but not at all surprised, to see this type of groundbreaking work come out of our own University of Illinois. I want to applaud President Colleen and the entire research and development team at University of Illinois. I also want to acknowledge the work of Derek Lindblom and our DPH testing team, who are working closely with the university to assist in this potentially game-changing development. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to the president of the University of Illinois, Dr. Tim Colleen. Doctor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor Pritzker. Thank you, Dr. Zike. And thank you for your leadership and, and your hard work on behalf of us all. Good afternoon, everyone. We are excited to be here. The University of Illinois system is proud of its leadership role in the fight against COVID-19 and its groundbreaking contributions to safety and to restoring the way of life that we all appreciate now more than ever. Serving the needs of our state is at the very core of our land grant mission, and we have done it with distinction. We'll continue to do that during the crisis. Our brilliant researchers were behind epidemiological modeling that Governor Pritzker used to enact stay-at-home orders that saved many lives across Illinois. And our world-class health care team in Chicago literally saved lives on the front lines here and are con currently conducting the vaccine trial, one of the most important ones. Today's announcement is yet another game changer. As you heard from the governor, the pioneering saliva-based testing developed by our leading edge researchers in Urbana produces rapid results at costs that allow and permit large-scale surveillance testing. That combination is a key to curbing the, violent, the virus, allowing isolation early enough to limit the spread of the infection. And it also identifies and isolates people with asymptomatic cases who would otherwise spread the virus unknowingly. It is a cornerstone of what we call the SHIELD program, developed by Urbana researchers that is allowing us to reopen our best three best-in-class universities for in-person instruction next week with students, faculty, and staff all undergoing regular biweekly tests to control the spread of the virus. And thanks to the FDA's approval of our saliva-based testing, we can now turbocharge these efforts to expand the reach of this groundbreaking technology. We have already created an internal unit at the system level that is working with the governor and his team to share the technology in Illinois. Known as SHIELD Illinois, this will work to expand capacity in hopes of benefiting other universities, 
K through 12 schools, and public and private institutions across the state. And we have today created a new university-related organization known as SHIELD T3 that is working to take the technology nationwide. That organization's board of manager held its inaugural meeting earlier today, just over a week after it was created, which reflects our commitment to sharing our know-how as quickly as possible to protect our country until the battle against COVID is won. Both SHIELD Illinois and SHIELD T3 were created in response to a wave of interest from institutions across the state and around the country who are eager to use it. That response signals the vast promise that our testing protocol holds, invented here at home in Illinois, and its power to save lives and livelihoods. We are grateful to the FDA for the green light that will help us share this new breakthrough technology, and to Governor Pritzker and his team for all of their support. I also want to thank Bill Jackson and his team at our Discovery Partners Institute, who have been instrumental in this process and are showcasing the power that DPI holds to move our state forward. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Robert Jones, Chancellor of the Urbana Champaign campus, who will talk more about SHIELD, how it came to be, and the leading edge scholarship that delivered it. Robert. First of all, let me start by saying thank you, President Colleen and Governor. Thank you so much. It's indeed an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. I think we all would agree that the FDA emergency use authorization is extremely exciting and important news for all of us in the midst of this pandemic. This is a critical new tool that we believe will let communities scale up their COVID-19 testing capabilities more rapidly in ways that are also more affordable. We are proud to be the university that is home to a huge team of amazingly dedicated, talented researchers who came together so quickly to move this test from concept to use approval in just a, a matter of months. I can only describe their collective effort as heroic, and I might also add amazing. They have worked tirelessly and I mean exactly what I say with that word. This has been a seven day a week, 24 hours a day effort since they began. And every single day we saw the progress and every single day built more confidence in the test itself and that it could be deployed more rapidly and at a massive scale. So let me give you an example of what I mean by massive scale. We tested 10,000 faculty, staff, and students on Monday. Yes, 10,000 faculty, staff tested on Monday alone. That accounted for about 1.3% of the total number of tests conducted in the country that day, 1.3%. That is why we believe that this test is such a breakthrough for our university, but perhaps more importantly for our state, for our nation, and for the world. It is not often that you get to see scientific breakthroughs roll out before your very eyes, but that is exactly what we had the pleasure of experiencing this summer as we watched Dr. Marty Burke and all the members of what we call our SHIELD targeted test and tell team. It is now my great pleasure to introduce someone who can really explain in much more detail how this test came about and just how important this breakthrough really is. And that is a person whose name you've heard several times and you'll continue to hear as a coordinator of our effort, Dr. Marty Burke, who's the Associate Dean for Research of our Carl Illinois College of Medicine and Professor of Chemistry and has been to the convener of our SHIELD team. Give me great pleasure to introduce someone that is really, along with his amazing team, that is doing what a land-grant university like Illinois is supposed to do, and that is go out to serve the public good. Marty. Well, thank you so much, Chancellor Jones. Thank you, Dr. Azike, Governor Pritzker, President Colleen, uh, Provost Congelaris, and Vice Chancellor Martinez for all your tremendous leadership 
and all of your confidence and faith in our capacity to execute on our land grant mission and try to make a difference during this very challenging time. As mentioned, uh, I was asked back in March uh, to build a team to try to stand up and strategically deploy scalable COVID-19 testing as part of our university's comprehensive effort to reopen as safely as possible. One of the first things I realized is this all about safety, safety to empower our community. And so we called it our shield effort to reflect that focus on safety as our very first priority. The second thing that we quickly realized is that testing was going to be critically important, but testing is not a silver bullet. It was going to require a comprehensive program to wrap around that testing capability to figure out who to test and how often, and to rapidly communicate the results of those tests in a way that can help people get isolated very quickly and get the contact tracing started fast so that we could eliminate the spread of the virus. The third thing that we realized right at the outset is that in order to achieve the goals we were after, it was gonna require innovation. We would need to innovate in the data science required to predict and understand the course of the disease and to figure out who to test and how often in a way that was constantly driven by the very best frontier science we could get our hands on. It was going to require innovation in terms of how we communicate. And I'm happy to tell you, Bill Sullivan, my colleague is here and his team developed a new app called Safer in Illinois, where users can get their results directly on their phone and actually participate in exposure notifications to complement person-based contact tracing and thereby maximize the impact of those efforts. And last and certainly not least, it was going to require innovation in testing. We sat down and tried to figure out what it would take to pull this off. And a colleague in chemistry, Paul Hergenrother, and I mapped it out and realized the current state of the art where you have a nasal swab, viral transfer media, RNA isolation, and then finally the test was not going to be sufficient. This standard process is too slow, it's too expensive, and it has too many supply chain bottlenecks in order to be able to do fast and frequent testing on scale. And so my colleague, Dr. Hergenrother, led an extraordinary team of students and postdocs at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign to go after a test that was directly from saliva to the PCR test and thereby cut out the time, cost, and supply chain bottlenecks that were limiting the capacity for fast and frequent testing on scale. And we're very excited to say the team discovered such a methodology in which saliva can be heated for a period of time and then directly transitioned after addition of a buffer into a PCR assay. And so the fast and capacity for frequent application of this test really was a game